In the heart of London, 17 contestants are gathered from all corners of the UK. Gearing up for the ultimate showdown. The aim is to support children with their mental health. £10,000 is up for grabs to turn their game-changing ideas into reality. Dr. Nazar, you are so nice. Meet the power trio of panelists. Dr. Ali al an Islamic speaker and director at Dar al-Islam, an author with outstanding Islamic knowledge. There is a gap in the market to help our brothers and sisters who are reverts. Dr. Nazar Murali, a renowned doctor, a speaker at the Salam Center, and an esteemed advocate for health. I'm interested in coming into it, not to earn money for myself. I'll probably buy shares on behalf of the Salam Center. And Dr. Shabir Tijani, a prominent Noha reciter with over 20 albums and a serial entrepreneur. So what sort of revenue streams do you have for this so that you can keep going and keep developing this idea? As they analyze and decide, who has the community's most fitting idea? It's not just a competition. It's a journey through tough stages where dreams meet reality, an endeavor to captivate and impress the imam of our time. Whoever makes it through is still serving the Ahlul Bayt. But who will rise to claim the title of the infallible servant winner? Listen. Our first contestant has journeyed a considerable distance, armed with an idea that could be the ultimate solution for consumers seeking swift answers to their religious queries. My name is Ali Zaini, I'm 24 years old. I studied computer science at university and I'm currently working as a software engineer at a startup. I really like working on different tech projects and making different applications that can serve the community. And that's one of the projects I want to pitch today. Will his innovative idea leave a lasting impression on the panelists? Assalamu alaikum, brother Ali. Welcome to the show. Wa alaikum assalam. I'm really excited to be here. Uh, I'm excited myself. Um, are you ready? Yeah, I've been preparing my presentation and practicing it a bit. I'm really excited to share my project and get their feedback and reactions. Well, inshallah, the best of luck and uh, I hope you go through. Thank you very much. Really excited. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum uh, assalam. What's your name? My name is Ali Zaini. Ali Zaini. Thank you for coming, Ali. Please start. So, Assalamu alaikum. My name is Ali Zaini. I'm a 24 year old Iraqi software engineer. And the projects I want to share with you today are called Ask Ayatollah. Ask Ayatollah is a website which has an AI on it, which has been trained on the resources of Ayatollah Sayyid Sistani. So, it's been, it uses his QA and his books to be able to answer your questions. So, you can ask it a question and it will use those resources to respond to you. Um, it's not meant to be a replacement for your current merge yet. It's just meant to aid you in getting information and resources from them. So you see, you can type a question here. So in this case, they're searching, is haddock fish halal? Um, and the AI will tell you that haddock fish is halal because it has scales. And it'll also give you a link to Ayatollah Sayyid Sistani's website, which will give you the actual source for that information. So you know what, where it's coming from. So you can double check it yourself. Again, because we don't want the AI to just come up with its own rulings. We want you to be able to use it just as an assistant to get rulings. So far, we've had over 5,000 questions asked and over 500 chat interactions with the application. And this number is growing daily as people will try it out. Um, and again, I want to support more languages because it's really important for me to make sure these projects are really inclusive for people from uh, different backgrounds. Um, I'm also really interested in any other projects, so uh, anything where I can contribute with my, my skills uh, to make projects for the community, I'd love to do that. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, uh, Ali. Uh, great presentation. Very well done. Can you sort of expand a bit more technical, but not too detailed, to what is actually happening in the background? Because uh, you're asking um, a, a, a machine to give you answers about very critical fiqh questions. Of course, yeah. So I was you know, talking with friends and we were discussing different rulings and we were trying to understand like whether or not something was halal or haram or uh, like the specific rulings on a matter. Um, and we tried to use the existing search engine on uh, Ayatollah Sayyid, Sayyid Stani's website. And it wasn't quite accurate, you know, for example, with the example I give here where you ask, is haddock fish halal? If you search haddock, there's never been a specific ruling about haddock fish. There's just been rulings about fish in general, you know? So if you wanted to ask about haddock in particular, you'd have to reach out to uh, someone who's very knowledgeable on that topic, who can sort of derive that ruling for you. Um, the goal with the AI is, like I said, it's not to replace your merger, it's to um, work with the existing resources that uh, already exist and just sort of give you that information. So for example, it's not deriving that 
um, haddock fish is halal because it has scales. It's using Ayatollah Sayyid Sistani's answer about that fact and the existing fact that haddock fish does have scales to conclude that therefore haddock is halal. Yeah, but how accurate is all this? Because, you know, it, when it comes to the issues of fiqh, um, of course, you know, we've got to go back to the source of, you know, the, the merja himself and, and ask them or representative of the merja. Uh, you know, of course, the merger is more accurate than, than the, the computer. So do you think this actually might misguide people? I think, I think that's a great question. Um, and it's definitely one of the early concerns that I had when I was working on it. And that's why I tried to add features that could sort of help mitigate that. So first of all, we have a disclaimer here that says you have to, ch you should check the sources before acting on the information. Um, it also provides you a link that you can click to open up that resource and actually read through the existing rulings that it's using to derive its answer. And it also gives you the opportunity to dislike or like the answer. So if it is incorrect, you can dislike it. But you know, we know the you know there are a lot of people who will take the answer firsthand. You know, they'll right. see the answer, they say that's it, that's halal. But what if it got it wrong? I think they had very valid concerns. Um, they they mentioned that the project is quite risky. Um, but I think without high risk, there's no high reward. Go back to the slide which showed the five thousand and five hundred. So those five thousand questions that people have asked or you have actually. Um, how have you validated those answers to those 5,000 questions? What I have done is I've sort of tested existing questions on Ayatollah Sayyid Sistani's website where he has a question and an answer and I've made sure that if you ask those questions it does give you basically the same answer that's provided on his website um, where possible and um, that's sort of been the main thing that I've been doing. But what if, what if the, the, the question hasn't been asked before to, to the... What, what will it do? So it will, it will tell you that. Um, we can't answer that question. Dr. Shabir. Assalamu alaikum Ali. Thank you so much. I think the presentation was really good. I just have a couple of questions taking the question in a slightly different direction. Um, obviously, one of the key things here is that the idea needs to be self-sustaining. So what sort of revenue streams do you have for this so that you can keep going and keep developing this idea going forward? Yeah, so uh, currently I'm self-funding this project and um, I, to be honest, I kind of want to keep it that way. I don't want to um, use I don't want to have ads or require people to pay for this. Um, first of all, the information is not mine, so it's not mine to sort of put, put behind a paywall or anything like that. Personally, I don't plan on uh, monetizing it. That being said, um, there are ways to generate some uh, revenue to keep the project self-sustained. So that could be through either donations or maybe having paid versions of the application uh, that have maybe different features. Okay. Um, and from these questions you've that people have asked, have you had any feedback? Do you have any sort of testimonials or anything for people that have used the website? Yeah, so um, I, I try to make it very easy to give me feedback. I have a contact link on my website. I have um, a button where you can report the answers and also give a like or a dislike to the answer that's provided. Um, that's really important to me to get that feedback and I do check it regularly, stuff well, like that. It's really, to me, uh, your, your intentions are, are, are marvelous, really. And if I can go back to day one when you started thinking about this, what probably pushed you to do something like this, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, is the fact that there is no other way for an individual to get an answer quick enough for his need. Is it right? Yeah, that was definitely a big part of it. We should really be at the forefront of these uh, technological advancements and make sure that we're sort of contributing to them and uh, using them to serve ourselves and our community. Rather than a website, to have an app uh, developed would be much more smarter and quicker for everyone's uh, uh, mobile phones, the youngsters can ask the questions directly. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I can see your enthusiasm. Your your commitment is marvelous, it really is. So may Allah bless you for, for that. And, you know, we need more people like you who, who actually find a, a gap and try to fill in this gap. Um, however, I do think that uh, this is a very uh, sort of an area that does need the involvement of scholars. Uh, this area does need a lot of um, attention because it's fiqh. I think Dr. Ali Halli identified some very valuable and key criticisms, uh, especially about reaching out to uh, some scholars and speaking to them. Interestingly enough, I have actually contacted his brother, Sheikh Muhammad Al Halli, um, and gotten his uh, feedback as well, where he's tried it out, he's asked some questions on it, and he's, he identified some questions that had mistakes, and then I promptly corrected those. So now, those same questions that he asked, you can get them, uh, you can ask them and you'll get the correct answers. Uh, Eileen, very, very good presentation. You're, you're an inspiration to young people in our community and inshallah, I hope more young people do something for the community, for, for, for the betterment of our community. Uh, talking from a slightly different point of view, 
Um, there is limited scalability in this. Um, there's only so far you can go with this. And in terms of sustainability, I think that's quite limited as well. So you might want to think about how you can expand this idea so that more and more people can find use for it. Um, but Alhamdulillah, I think you're doing a really good job. Just keep working hard. Um, and as, uh, as Dr. Ali said, try and get some scholars on board to make sure that you've got all the angles covered with this. Yeah, thank you very much. Really appreciate the feedback. In terms of like scalability and things like that, I, you know, I do agree with that. Like right now, it's very focused on a single merger. I do want to expand it to support more, which should hopefully bring more people in. Again, same goes with like supporting more languages. Hopefully that can bring more people in. Uh, so far, Alhamdulillah, has had people from many countries around the world use it um, and get answers. But um, yeah, inshallah, like we can con awesome. con continue to progress that. Thank you so much, Brother Ali Zaini, uh, for your presentations. May Allah bless you and continue I help you to continue working to serve him, inshallah. Thank, Thank you all you. very much. Yeah. Brother Ali Zaini, that was a tough round. Yeah, um, I think they asked some great questions and gave me a lot of great feedback and I was uh, you know, really excited to share that project with them. What a surprise, Dr. Ali Hilli actually knew about AI. So what do you think? Was that a shock to you? Or? Um, yeah, no, I think that's great. I have seen like lectures online of uh, people discussing AI uh, like in the Shia space, which I think is great. And um, it's good to see that our community is getting involved with those things because this technology is going to exist, you know, with or without us. And I think it'd be great if we can get involved uh, with these kind of things. Well, that sounds great. Uh, do you anticipate you'll be going through to the next round, do you think? I can't predict the future, but, you know, inshallah, with whether I make it to the next round or not, you know, their feedback has been invaluable and I'll use it to progress my projects. Okay, brother Ali, I wish you the best of luck and inshallah, we'll, we'll, hopefully we'll see you. Inshallah, thank you very much. The panelists appeared content with Ali Zaini's responses. The lingering question remains, has he truly left a lasting impression that goes beyond mere satisfaction? So, uh, I, I think uh, his ideas are good and I think it needs to be given encouragement. Uh, we, we can only try and help and see if we can validate. I mean, the fact that you can get an instant answer to a question whilst you're on the road it's to Milton Keynes, but it's not great knowing whether I'm going to pray Kassar or not. Yeah. Instant answer is great, isn't it? Yeah, but, but it's, it's how accurate is it? I mean, I, so, so exactly right, you're 100% right. But I've worked but on this. I've worked on AI for a long time. I did my yeah. PhD on, on this and it's, I know these, uh, you know, the classifiers, they, they, they still quite inaccurate. It's, I don't think it's ever going to be 100%, to be honest with yeah, you. Yeah, but is, if, it's, if it's not 100%, then, yeah, but I think one can we thing use that it we to can, such a thing? No, I, I, I agree with you. I think even if it's 99%, it's still not good enough. But I think one thing we can agree on is that this is a young guy who's got a really good background in software engineering and he can achieve a lot yeah. uh, given mentorship. So even if it's not this idea, if he can find the right mentor, someone to guide him, I'm sure we can... He's very him. enthusiastic. Yeah. He's, he's, he, he has this sense of, I need to give back yeah, to the exactly, community. Yeah, exactly. And that's quite rare. Motivation, uh, exactly. Absolutely. Our next contestant arrives today, fueled by an unwavering passion and determination to uplift a community of new Muslims, fostering an environment where they can not only survive, but truly feel embraced. My name is Jessica. I'm 32 years old. I've come on Infallible Servant Show because I'm really passionate about helping converts come into the community. It's really hard for a lot of us and I don't think that there's a lot of support out there. Salam alaikum sister. Thank you for joining us on the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Um, so uh, you'll be facing the judges now. Uh, do you think uh, you've got what it takes? Inshallah, obviously I'm nervous, I'm not used to being on TV, but Inshallah with the help of El Bay, I will do well. Inshallah, Inshallah. As-salamu alaykum. As salam, Jessica Prescott, thank you very much for coming along. So tell us uh, a little bit more about yourself. So you are a revert, as you mentioned. Um, when did you change over uh, on the path of uh, Islam? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah, I came to uh, I came to Islam about seven years ago now. Seven years ago, okay. Tell us about this. Uh, you've got three minutes to present to us what your thoughts are. I've come up with an organisation. I want to make it a charity called El Khak uh, Converts. Um, basically, I think there's a great need in the community um, for help with with Shia converts. Alhamdulillah, for myself, I've had a lot of help integrating and I've had a lot of help becoming a Shia Muslim uh, but unfortunately not all sisters are as lucky as I am. 
Uh, so where to start? I mean, I've got so many ideas for converts. Um, mainly it's about them transitioning into the community and helping that transition go smoothly. So I'm gonna outline a few ways I can potentially help with my charity. I want to set up a helpline that's going to uh, give converts that support. So basically, there'll be volunteers from the community that uh, speak to them about common issues that converts are facing. Also, I want to set up a mentorship program. Basically, my mentorship program is going to deal with uh, volunteers from the community and they're going to have like a buddy system where they're going to uh, go along to mosques, go along to events, invite converts to their family home and really make them feel part of the community. Um, also, I want to partner with Shia Mosque in the community and have like coffee mornings, events, um, like uh, lecturers come in and speak about issues that converts are facing. Eventually, I mean, it's a bit ambitious, but I want to facilitate Ziara trips because a lot of converts don't haven't got the funds to go to Ziara. And then finally, I mean, the end goal is creating a mosque, a space for English converts. I mean, that, that's what I plan. I really hope Infallible Servants can help me because I really want to facilitate this organization for fellow converts. Thank you so much. That was very helpful. And I agree with all those four points, the helpline um, to be able to uh, go attach yourself to the local mosque um, uh, and being able to mentor as well. For a long time I've wanted to serve Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. I think they're the greatest role models that we can follow. Uh, also, after becoming a mother, I have two children under two, uh, I would love to, for them to see me serve in the community uh, and teach them how to correctly follow Ahl Bayt. In terms of your group of converts uh, within the British uh, Shi uh, Muslims, what sort of numbers are we talking about? Do you have any idea? Um, so, I mean, there's about 30 converts, Sunni and Shia, that convert on a daily basis. Okay. So my job yes. will be to find these converts. So okay. obviously, like a big part of the funding is going to be for other individuals to come and help me because I can't do it alone. Eventually, I want al haq converts to be a household name. I want the whole community to know, oh, al haq converts, you know, they met a convert and then they refer the convert to, to us at al haq yes. inshallah. Okay, so, so give me some ideas to how would you actually do it. Uh, you said about 30 people convert to Islam on a daily basis. How would you actually utilize this money to engage an individual, you said? So I need individuals to support me. Obviously, that's gonna, I'm going to need funding for that. Also, I'm going to need funding for events because lecturers in the community, they aren't free. Um, also, I want to create welcome packs that are given to converts that come into our mosques. For example, they'll contain a turba, they'll contain a Quran that has transliteration from Karbala, inshallah. Uh, I'll let my colleagues take over. Ali, do you want to start? Yeah, thank you very much, Sister uh, Jessica, for your presentation. It's always very inspiring for us uh, to, to meet people like yourself because, you know, for us uh, to meet uh, someone who's actually uh, found Islam and discovered Islam. It is uh, an inspiration for us who were, you know, we have parents who were who are Muslim, so we didn't go through that that particular uh, sort of discovery. Are there any other um, organizations, converts for, uh, catered for the, the you know, the, the converts who have um, converted to the path of Ahlul Bayt, Salaamu Alaikum. Are there any in, in London at least that you can coordinate with, work with, or, or there aren't any? Um, I've come across one since, and I've looked extensively for the last six years uh, since being in London. Um, I found it really hard to find any. There was a rise, but I don't think they're currently active. Um, I mean, all the sisters that I know have, have struggled mm. the same to find to find an organization that will help them with common issues that we're facing. And so you, I mean, yeah. none are household names or very well known. Sure. And have you approached uh, Islamic centers to ask them to say, look, you know, I want to, I want you to help me out. I want to um, establish al haq converts um, and I want you to um, help me out, create events, do mentorship programs, etc. in your, in the center and fund this because 
we are a community that deserves this. Have you, have you done that? No, I mean, I've had a number of chats with, with people in the community, but nothing's actually um, fabricated as of yet. I mean, I have two children under two. I'm quite a busy person. Sure. So, I mean, this is why I need additional help from the community yeah. and I need 10,000 pounds to be able to channel that into the right places. Regarding the actual viability of the charity, um, you've mentioned volunteers several times in your presentation. and Volunteers are very, very hard to come across. Um, people who are willing to give up their time for, for nothing because they obviously, people do have busy lives. Do you have any revenue streams, um, streams through which you can earn money in order to make the charity grow and to reach more people? Uh, currently I don't, that is going to be something I'm going to have to establish and work out. So I mean already I have a couple of sisters that want to help and assist me uh, and volunteer, uh, but obviously you're right. But it's going to be hard to find volunteers. I think once I partner with mosques in the uh, in London, and we speak about this in the communities, um, uh, I think people need to realise that in our community this should be, um, you know, something that's that's a top priority. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, just a quick yeah. feedback, yeah. and then we'll, we'll end. I think. Uh, I think uh, you know. I, I love your 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 uh, motivation. Uh, you know, you sense that there's a need, and that's vital. It's important, and I do. I do think that uh, your project definitely needs to be uh, implemented. Uh, however, I do not think that y you can do this alone. Uh, you, you do need help of the, the Muslim community uh, in, in London, um, and you know, I, I run an Islamic center in, in Wasda Green, and I, I'm very, very happy for for us to to sit down and, and help you in any way possible uh, to host all your programs, uh, help you financially, whatever you require. You know, we, uh, I take, uh, you know, I make the decisions. So I am very happy to tell you right now that I'm very happy for you to come to our center and you have the space, you have a, a place to do your events. We'll support you in terms of whatever. Um, and so, you know, don't ever feel that you're alone. Uh, it's very important to approach centers because we don't know there are people like you who exist. It's probably our fault. So I really think that the first step that needs to be done is to approach centers. And if the centers come and say, look, I'm sorry, we are not there to help you, then go on and establish your own, etc. But I do think the resources are available. Uh, for, for you to, uh, to explore. So I think Inshallah, that's... I mean, the main point of me coming with this program is not just for the £10,000. It's to, you know, if I can help one convert by coming on this program and she sees me and says, OK, I'm going to reach out to Jessica Prescott in the community. Please come to me because I want to help you. You know, there is a great need. I feel like I have come to Shia Islam to serve El Bay and to bring these converts into the community and have an easy transition because so many sisters are struggling. And thank you, um, Said. I mean, it would be great to, to partner with uh, Da'a al-Islam and, uh, you know, bringing converts to, to your organization. I'd like to add to his statement to say that I'm a trustee of an organization called the Salam Center in Hara. And this is something that we would support 100%. So Thank happy you. To that means that it. means a great lot. That means such such a lot to me, really. Um, well, I said it first. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we are nearer to you. Yes, yes. Yeah. I can pop down the road and say <laughs> hi. <laughs> um, my my sort of final comments are that I, I think what you're doing is amazing. Your motivation is an inspiration. Inshallah, this is the beginning of a very very fruitful journey. Inshallah. Noble. Thank you so much for coming along. Thank you so much for having me. Sister Jessica, that was a tough round, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I find it really hard. I'm not used to being on TV. I mean, uh, there was, it was like a battle in there. Uh, a lot of financial questions by Dr. Shabir. Um, how do you think that went? I mean, finances are not my strong point. I'm definitely going to have to hire an accountant or something uh, to initially work out costs and things like that. He's made me realize. Well, um, sister, I wish you the best of luck and hopefully we'll see you in the next round. The panelists appeared genuinely enthused by Jessica's idea. As the spotlight shines on her, the future seems to hold great promise. Uh, so what did you guys think? 
I would have thought that something would have developed yeah, by now. Yeah. Mm, no, th- yeah. There is a gap in the market for that. Yeah. But, but I'm surprised she said that um, she has searched and there isn't anything similar. Yeah. Mm. I, I'm going to search about it. <laughs> I, I, I doubt. I, I'm going to go through the... If you look at the MCB yeah. level, Muslim Council of Britain level, or within the Shia equivalent mm, organization, mm. And just let's try and yeah. find out if something has already been done. It yeah. would be a shame for her to turn the wheel again yeah. if something has already been well, she done. She does definitely need support. And yeah. I, I really think that our organizations yeah. should step up. Centers, yes. Islamic yeah. centers should yeah. step up yeah. and help. Yeah. Yeah. But I really don't think that she can do this by herself. No, 100%. I, I, yeah, for me, the issue here is the viability of this. I don't think it's a sustainable model. No, it's it's such a niche area. If you look at the numbers yeah. we're talking about, it's such yeah. a small number. Yeah. To create the infrastructure of a whole charity around such a small number of people, yeah. it's going to be difficult. Our upcoming contestant exudes confidence, accompanied by a little bundle of joy. Armed with an innovative concept for a fresh start in the realm of Ziyara travels. My name is Fatima Zahra Raza, and I'm 37 years old. I have come on the show uh, so I, I'm able to serve the Ahlul Bayt alayhi, alayhi through my charity, Sanctified. Assalamu alaikum sister. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you for joining the show. Uh, thank you for having me. You're about to face the panelist. Are you ready? Uh, yes, I, f- I do feel that I'm ready. I'm very excited about it and uh, I'm, I'm excited about pitching my idea to the judges. Okay, great. Well, I wish you the best of luck. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. How are you, sister? I'm good, alhamdulillah. How are you? Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, can you uh, introduce yourself, please? My name is Fatima Zahra Raza, and I'm from uh, Manchester. Uh, okay, so uh, three minutes, inshallah, to, for you to. Uh, give your presentation. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlal uqdatun li sani wa fahl qawli. I am here today to present to you Sanctified. Before I go over the mission and the vision uh, for Sanctified, I'd, I would like to invite you all um, to think back to the t- first time that you went to on a Ziyara trip or, or, or a trip that you have longed for a very long time. Uh, I'm sure you will agree with me um, that you will use very positive words to describe that experience. Now imagine that you are not able to perform uh, uh, such as Yara or go, go on such an experience. Such is the case for many individuals around the world, uh, even here in the UK. Uh, I personally know of many individuals, sadly some of whom have passed away and they have longed for the Ziyara of Abu Abdullah al Um So uh, our vision at Sanctified is uh, to help families and individuals access the holy uh, ziyarat uh, by providing funds or facilitating um, expertise and resources so that individuals and families can uh, enjoy g- uh, going to their chosen ho- holy trip. Um, there's a stigma attached in our community about asking for help, especially seeking help from charities. Um, so our ethos is based on uh, care, compassion, community, and making connections and building people's confidence and empowering individuals. So my, uh, our objectives for 2024 and 2025 are to set up and launch uh, Sanctified um, if officially uh, in the UK initially, but then our aim is to go worldwide. Um, and our second objective is to facilitate Ziyara trips for 14 individuals this year, inshallah. Um, so uh, um, I'm going to uh, launch Sanctified and create awareness through using social media and going to different social events um, and setting up market stalls. And uh, I, I'm going to also um, introduce five revenue generating products and services. So I want this charity to be self-sustained. Um, so it, it, it's going to have a business that's linked to the charity, that's going to fund the charity. Um, and then um, I would like to make contacts with different Ziyara trips, uh, Ziyara groups, uh, and uh, offer them my services. Um, and inshallah, I, w- I would like to grow the Sanctified family. And this is the re- one of the reasons why I'm here, uh, to advertise Sanctified uh, to, the, uh, to the Shia community, inshallah. So these are some of uh, the products that I'm going to be launching this year. Um, so I'm going to uh, have Umrah, Hajj and Arba'in Essentials, which I'm going to sell through my website and the social media channels. Um, I'm going to have Ziyara books in Arabic, English, Farsi and Urdu. Uh, I'm going to have two subs- subscription boxes. One's going to be Sunnah food subscription, subscription box. 
uh, and the other one's going to be reading and writing subscription boxes for children. Um, we've got links in Iraq and Iran, so we can provide private tour guide services in both Iraq and Iran. Um, today I'm here to ask for your support in supporting my charity uh, and be someone's answered prayer, uh, become the means to the means of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank you so much, uh, sister, uh, for that presentation. Uh, I'm just, just going to ask you a few questions. I'll kick start uh, with a question. Why, why the name Sanctified? Uh, because uh, initially I wanted to call it Holy Ziyarat, uh, but I want to appeal to a wider audience. Um, so Sanctified is a, is a more open-ended uh, name. Um, so um, by, by calling it such an open-ended name, I want to um, uh, open the door to other opportunities as well, inshallah, in the future. Uh, Habib ibn Muzahir is the one who inspires me uh, through his loyalty and through his uh, determination to serve Imam Hussein. He is my inspiration. Uh, Dr. Nazar. Um, thank you, sister. So I understand exactly what you are trying to do. Uh, and I understand exactly what your objectives are. Noble, alhamdulillah. May Allah bless you. But it is something <clears throat> that you want to continue in doing as long as you possibly can in perpetuity. And you have said that there are five revenue streams. So am I, is my understanding correct that you will, if you were the winner today, you will utilize the 10,000 pounds not to fund the people to go for Ziara, but to fund the structure you'll set up such that um, there is a, a, a sustainable, regular income generation to send, say, 14 people a year or whatever your targets are. What is Sunnah food subscription boxes? Just explain me that. Uh, so foods are a part of the Sunnah of the Holy Prophet, like for example, dates, um, honey, uh, figs, such so foods. So you, you would sell those things? Um, yeah, so uh, uh, people sign up to my uh, charity and yeah. uh, every month they get a box filled okay. with Sunnah foods. In all of them, you will hope that your cost would be less than what your revenue is going to yes. be. So the difference would be the profit. Yeah. Have you done any calculations so far as to how many of one, how many of two will you be able to do per year or whatever? And what sort of sums would be coming in? Have you done any calculations so far? Uh, for in, in terms of sending people to Ziara trips? No, or in, terms, no, in of, terms of revenue generation. Yes. How much would number one bring you per year? How much would number two bring you per year? Have you done any? If you haven't done it, it doesn't matter. I'm just asking. Um, right now, I've not done any research, but I've, I've had experience of selling right. uh, similar right. things okay. uh, for a, okay. a charity called the 10 yeah. And I know that the months of Ramadan, Sha'ban, yeah. um, Muharram and Safa, they're, okay. Uh, okay. they're... So all of these, this wonderful ideas, are they your personal ideas? Are there a group of people? Or is it within your family? Or how did this... Uh, right now, I, it's just my personal ideas, but I'm open just to more ideas, yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Hassan, thank you, Doctor. I um, just wanted to say that presentation was really good. What I would suggest is maybe getting on board of someone else who is more, uh, I guess I would say financially savvy or, or more sort of like a business manager or something like that. Someone who can help you to um, sort out the finances, the revenue streams, the way you're going to subsidize, what proportion of the revenue is used for subsidization. All of those things are really important, but I really like the concept in itself. Okay, thank you so much for Thank you feedback. so much. I'm, I just have a very quick uh, question. So there's several uh, yes. avenues here. You want, to, you want to use the money to help people to go to Ziyara. Yes. So give them the whole package, the whole experience. Yeah. In addition, you provide a service where when someone lands there, someone can actually guide them and take yes. them to places because they're, they need help to yes. do that. And, and so you're providing several avenues, yes. several services. Uh -huh. I think, I think it's, a, it's a noble idea, but I, I really don't, I can't see, uh, it, it's not very structured. It mm -hmm. needs to be more structured, more focused. It just seems like, you know, you, you want to help and I can see that passion and may Allah bless you for that. But you really need to sit down with someone to make it make sure it's more structured it's more focused and also as dr shabir said it needs to also be financially uh, viable you need you need advisors you need people to get, put a structure in place yes. for this yeah uh dr nazar last feedback and then we'll end yeah no, no, i endorse what ali has said and i think you also accept that you don't want just the ten thousand pounds to be used for funding people i think you want to use the ten thousand yes. pounds to set up the structure Yep. of raising the funding on a perpetual mm -hmm. basis 
And, and I think uh, Dr. Ali is right that try and narrow down uh, the target uh, population that you want to help okay. rather than keeping it too wide. Okay, thank you. Well, your, 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 your idea is very noble. May Allah bless you. Thank, thank you, you so, so much, much for, for your coming thank you. uh, and presenting. Okay, uh, I don't know about you, but I was really nervous for you. How do you think that went? Um, yes, I was nervous as well initially, but then I've uh, I settled into it. And Alhamdulillah, it went really well. I've received some great feedback, inshallah. Inshallah, Alhamdulillah. Um, so, what do you think of uh, Dr. Ali Hilli's comments? Uh, they were very constructive, and I've got lots to think about, and uh, I need to focus uh, my uh, avenue. Um, uh, and uh, what, I, what I'm trying to do with this charity, inshallah. While the panelists express admiration for the idea, there's a lingering scepticism, suggesting they remain unconvinced. Just like the previous two, a uh, little bit surprised with the naivety. Yeah. Um, yeah. In terms of I ideas are super, all three. Yeah, they're all yeah. really naivety good. naivety in terms of development, seeking advice. There's no structure support. as well yeah. to them. Yeah. 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 I think your idea of just focus on people that are going on Ziara who have paid for their tickets and yeah. everything else, just when they land, someone to help them yeah. navigate. That's noble. It's a, it's a very yeah, small startup right. cost. Actually, and it'll actually you know, be only, useful. Only last month, um, um, uh, I, I know of a tour operator who actually refused to take two disabled yeah. people. Yeah, yeah and that's do. discrimination, yeah. isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. So, so if she only focuses on mm. that I'm going to be focused on those who are disabled. That's right. So as you rightly say, Tell the tour guys, if you get an inquiry, mm. can you please Come let me, me know? I'm yeah. there to support. Our next contestant, having witnessed and listened to the stories of countless parents, is here to showcase how her idea has already made a significant impact on numerous children across the UK. My name's Rabab Nur Muhammad Nasser and I'm 29 years old. I've come on this show to seek funding and also to spread the message of the Athol Bay. Assalamualaikum sister, thanks for coming. Asalaamu Alaikum, thank you for having me. Are you ready to face the panellists? I definitely have the passion, so inshallah all goes well. well I wish you the best of luck and uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Thank you so much. Asalaamu Alaikum. Asalaamu Alaikum Rahmatullah. How are you sister, you well? Alhamdulillah, I'm good, thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. Uh, can you just give us a short introduction about yourself, where you're from? So my name's Rabab Nur Muhammad Nasser, um, and I'm here today to pitch my business, Young Mindfulness. Nice. Well, where are you from? North London. North London. Okay. Very much welcome. You have uh, three minutes. Asalaamu As Alaikum. I'm a primary school teacher by profession, but I'm also the founder of Young Mindfulness. And Young Mindfulness is my passion, it's my dream. Um, and I'm here today to convince you as to why I should get some funding. As we know, mindfulness has been mentioned in the Quran and um, the Ahlul Bayt used to practice mindfulness and reflection. So if I just tell you a bit about my business, Young Mindfulness. So Young Mindfulness launched in 2019. And what we've been doing up till now is providing fun and engaging classes. So we work with schools, we work with nurseries, and we work with families. So we go and deliver sessions, sometimes after school clubs, um, interventions, and the aim is to support children with their mental health and to teach children all about their feelings and that actually all their feelings are okay. If we look at ourselves, some of us grew up wondering why we were having feelings and almost being scared of them. But the narrative needs to change now. And as mentioned before, this is talked about in the Quran. Um, this is talked about in Islam. We're even told how to deal with anger in Islam. And I think sometimes in our community, mental health can be a taboo and people are scared to talk about it. And people associate it with negative feelings, but actually it's okay. I believe this should be a preventative. So it shouldn't just be taught when, you know, we grow up and we're struggling and we need help. Just like we're taught to read and write and we're taught how to play football, why are we not taught how to manage our feelings? So this is going really well now, but the limitation is that I couldn't spread this message to a wide audience because there's budgeting constraints 
um, there's location constraints. And so I really wanted to make this accessible to everybody, anybody and everybody. And that's why my new idea, the next step of my business, moving on from the classes, is the Young Mindfulness Schools portal. And this is a, an emotional wellbeing portal that can be accessed by teachers, by parents, and their videos aimed at children. And all they have to do is press play and they learn how to breathe, how to meditate, but all in a fun and accessible way. Because as we know, children absorb things when they're engaged and when they're interested. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Fantastic presentation. Really, really like the idea. Um, so I take it you're already an established business from what you've said. Yes. So just talk me through what happens. So if a child, for example, you know, how do they access your service? Is it through the parents? Is it through the school? And then what's the process for it? So in terms of the classes that we currently do, there's lots of different ways. So schools can access it. So we'll make arrangements with school, either for a club or an intervention. So you mean, or you mean schools as in Main Street, Main Street. Street schools or, or, or madrasas, Friday, uh, Saturday, Sunday? Madrasas. So, so at the moment we're mainly working with mainstream schools and independent schools, but also um, have worked with madrasa to run sessions as well. But, but are they are they Islamic schools or just all schools? Yeah, all schools, including uh, Islamic schools. Okay. So, so what happens? Just talk me through the process. So, the school approaches you. You, you run a class, where do you run the class? Is it in the school? Is it in a separate location? Yeah. Is there a fee attached to it? So we run sessions with the school directly and we'll arrange it with them, we'll go to them, we'll do a session in their location and then we'll come away. Uh, there are fees attached to it. Um, when we're working with madrasas and Islamic schools, we do um, subsidise it. Uh, with mainstream schools and independent schools, we don't. But what's the fee? The, the fee of the session. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm not able to discuss financials today, unfortunately. Okay. But I'm happy to give them to you in, in private, of course. So, Rubab, let's just go back to the product. Yeah. The product is that at this moment in time, you attend schools, independent and other mainstream schools. Yeah. Uh, they engage you for a session for yes. an hour or so. You go yeah. and demonstrate it in the class yeah. um, and help the children. Yes. Um, and that product you want to now escalate it mm -hmm. and make it portal based so that remote schools and globally can access it. Exactly. But let me just understand for the benefit of everybody. I do know your product, by the way. Yeah. So just explain to me the immediate or the medium term benefit of a child. Okay. So for example, there was a child called Victoria who was really struggling with her emotions. Um, and so she came to Young Mindfulness sessions and her parents joined her. And although Young Mindfulness was preventative, um, there's evidence that we've helped her. So her school, after six months, asked her parents, have you been doing anything? Because her behavior in the classroom, she was previously breaking out in meltdowns in the classroom and it was causing um, significant disruption. However, when she's upset now, she goes to a quiet area of the classroom and her parents explained that she'd started Young Mindfulness. And so her mum sent, um, sent me this message um, to, to say that thank you so much because you genuinely made an impact. And so I want to move this to an online, uh, an online option so that anybody and everybody can access it. And I can reveal that the cost for that for parents will be £10.99 a month and for schools and teachers will be 59.99 a month for unlimited teachers. This is for the, the online portal, is this that is right? This is for the online okay, portal, fine. yeah. Um, what is it, uh, what made you come here today presented um, for and, 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 and try and convince us that it benefits Islam as a whole? Yeah, mindfulness, as I briefly mentioned earlier, is mentioned in the Quran, not in the word, specific word mindfulness, but reflection is talked about several times. We know that the Prophet, before he was uh, revealed uh, verses of the Quran, he would go up to the mountain and he would reflect. And reflection is encouraged. Emotions are talked about in the Quran. I think for me, spreading the message of the Ahlul Bayt is not just about spreading it directly, but also about spreading it indirectly. So that's through their personalities, their thoughts and their practices and mindfulness was one of those.
Yeah, and I think there's another thing here that actual mental health generally is a taboo in our communities. Yes. And I think if, if you're saying that you will subsidize it for madrasas and Islamic centers, yeah. that kind of makes it more centric or yes. more sort of open. Um, one thing I'm a little bit unsure about, um, I just wanted you to clarify it. So you're charging, you're using a subscription model, aren't you? Yeah. Um, and these videos go onto your website? Or what, what sort of medium do they, what sort of platform do they go on? So there's a members only area on my website. So there's a login button and then you can log in once you're a member. Everything I've created is um, off the back of all the research the past five years. So why wouldn't you not just put this on YouTube and monetize it? I am going to put a few videos on YouTube, sample videos, but I also want to run a members only area right. because I'm also going to have other elements like, assemb like live assemblies that they can join. Um, so I want to be able to do that all through the portal. So it's not just this is a video press play. There is also some interactive element to it. Exactly. As well. That's the key. Thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I still have concerns. Um, yeah. I, 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 I don't think this is what our community needs. I think it needs uh, uh, a for our children. It, they need a spiritual uh, mindfulness session. I think there's been a you know, the community is needs to specify, uh, you know, try to um, focus on spirituality and mindfulness because um, other other sects, other religions, other uh, uh, groups out there, they do things that are very similar. So we really need to inject spirituality. I, in our I, I disagree with you there. Sure. I think I think encouraging young entrepreneurs within our community is part and parcel of what we're doing here. I actually really like the business. I think you're doing really well. You've obviously started yourself and you're self-made. Keep up the good work. Um, one thing I would say is though, if you do progress to the semi-finals, is I would want some more financials from you. So that's something you may have to sort of discuss with us in the next round. Dr. Nazar? Yeah, um, I, I, as I said, I know the product very well. I'm so pleased that you are now going to take it to the next level for more wider uh, You've delivery, used this before? You, like. huh? you know the product very well? I know well? the product very well. Oh, do you? And I'm a customer. Oh, you're a customer? You're not young? On the, no, not on a personal business. Oh, okay. Not on a personal level, but there are businesses that I've introduced her to who use it very successfully. Fantastic. Okay. Fantastic. And they're absolutely delighted with that. Good. Okay, but I'm glad she's now taking it to the next level. Are you guys related? No, not at all. No. <laughs> but she's a Khoja and I'm a Khoja. Oh, yeah, that is the relation. Well, I'm, I'm a Khoja as well. So. <laughs> I, think, I think there's a Khoja thing going on here. Okay, thank you so much, you. Uh, Sister. May Allah bless you and thank, thank you for your uh, amazing work. Thank, thank you, you very so much. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. What on earth was going on? Oh, there was a lot of uh, disagreements there. So uh, I guess that was tough. What was the toughest part? I guess the toughest part is I've always had good feedback about what I do. So I think to hear um, Dr. Hilly's views on how it maybe needs to be more Islamically linked, I think that was a bit hard to hear. But I, I do agree with his point. I think for the purpose of this show, um, I agree with his point. I mean, you did mention uh, different Islamic elements to this as well. So, um, uh, well, anyway, um, I wish you the best of luck and uh, let's see how this ends up. Thank you very much. The panelists are tough to please. Dr. Hilly doesn't appear to be convinced. Will she still have a chance for the semi-finals? I can see you guys ganged up on me on that no, one. No, 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 no. Well, I think, I think the, the, the concern I have, this is quite a replicatable model yeah um, and other people could do similar thing but I suppose you've already had some experience so what are your thoughts I haven't actually looked at the product in detail uh, but I think uh, the fact that she's herself involved and she has developed a curriculum yeah. specifically geared for this younger age groups which I think she can then probably put yeah. into the wider market exactly, I think yeah. the business model now has to be for her to take this valuable product that she has developed by experience to the wider market. Yeah, but that, I, I'm very happy for that to happen. Yeah. But I don't think it's a valuable product. Because we need to feed our children with spiritual mindfulness. Not, not just, you know, just like, you know, uh, you know do, do breathing. And these are all very good. But, you know, doing tasbih, think, uh, you know, gratitude of shukr. If we keep on doing mindfulness as how the West, there's no difference. We, I can go on YouTube and do these things. But our children need injection of spirituality. We lack spirituality.
With four exceptional contestants and four ingenious ideas, the stage is set for an intense face-off. They stand prepared to vie for the coveted title of the infallible servant. The looming question hangs in the air. Who will earn the right to be welcomed back and who must bid farewell and return home? Thank you so much for uh, coming back. Uh, the judges uh, really loved your commitment, your ideas. May Allah bless you. Uh, but it's decision time. Uh, two of you will be going to the semi-finals and unfortunately two of you will be leaving us. Uh, Sister Jessica, thank you so much for your idea. It's very much needed in the community. We know that there is a gap in the market to help our brothers and sisters who are reverts. But there, we felt that you haven't done enough homework. Uh, for your idea. There needed to be a bit more uh, sort of, the idea needs to uh, come to fruition a bit more, more convincing. Uh, Sister Rabab, uh, we can clearly see that you had a uh, business idea that is very much established. Uh, you've been working on this um, and you seemed like someone who knows what they're talking about. Um, but we really didn't see uh, there is an Islamic angle to this. There's no much uh, spirituality which really needed to uh, be injected in mindfulness. Sister Fatima, we saw the, the passion you have for helping those who are in need, those who are disabled, those individuals who are uh, elderly, who want to go to Ziyara. That passion was very clear. However, your idea was not focused enough. Uh, you needed to be uh, sort of zoom into a particular area where you can excel in. And we found that the idea, you had lots of ideas, you wanted to do lots of things, but it was all over the place. There wasn't something that you needed to uh, focus on. And uh, we really thought that you needed to uh, have a niche, focus on one particular area that you can excel in. Brother Ali, uh, we all felt that you know you, your uh, presentation shows how uh, motivated you are um, and uh, showed how much passion you had for serving the community. However, uh, we did express that this is a quite a risky idea that you had, uh, ask Ayatollah. Um, you know, the, the technology of AI is brilliant, but it's still not that accurate. So it's a very risky uh, business idea. It's now time for us to reveal who has gone through and who's going to leave us. I'm going to pronounce the name, if you can step up, uh, and then later I will say whether you have gone through or you are leaving us. Sister Jessica. Sister Rabab. Uh, Sister Fatima and Brother Ali Zaidi, unfortunately you have not made it through. And congratulations to Sisters Jessica uh, and Sister Robab for making it to the semi-finals of the Infallible Service. Thank you so much. I'm really pleased to be going through to the second round and I will try my best to take on your feedback. Thank you so much. I'm incredibly shocked. I was convinced I wasn't going through, so thank you. May Allah bless you. Uh, we look forward to uh, hearing more in more details about your, uh, your ideas. You know, please take feedback seriously. Uh, and, uh, you know, we want to make sure that uh, we see your ideas come to fruition. So we will we look forward to hearing more more details about your ideas in the semi-finals. All of the ideas were uh, excellent. We look forward to hearing more uh, from those who uh, are through to the semi-finals. 
I want to congratulate the people who went forward to the next stage. Um, really amazing work by them and I wish them the best of luck with uh, the rest of this competition. I'm really shocked. I can't believe I got through to the next round. It's super exciting. I was really surprised. I was completely convinced that there was no chance I was going through, but Alhamdulillah. My idea and my project did tick a lot, many boxes which I felt that some of the other projects didn't take. And I'm not deterred, I'm going to inshallah continue working on this project and make sure that it can serve the community of Ahlul Bayt. I think I'm definitely excited, but I'm a bit nervous about how I'm going to make this happen and how I'm going to tweak my idea to incorporate more Islam into it. And uh, inshallah this is not the end of my journey and I am going to carry on with this project and inshallah uh, everybody is going to here of Sanctified. I had a really fun time at the studio today uh, working with the crew and everyone and it was a great experience. It's definitely going to be tough because I have two, two children under two um, so maybe a few late nights when they're in bed I think uh, to try and prepare myself but uh, inshallah uh, with Ahl Bayt's help I can you know do, do well inshallah.